Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. February 23rd, Justin Martyr. About 100 AD, Martyr was born in Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom of ancient Israel, a city of Gentiles and mixed marriages. Even as a boy, he wanted answers for life's big questions, and he wasn't finding them among the Stoics and other philosophers. But one day, he met a man who knew Jesus. Martyr listened, he questioned, he believed. After his conversion, Justin Martyr became a traveling teacher and the second century's foremost defender of the faith. Martyr once wrote, I fell in love with the prophets and these men who had loved Christ. I reflected on all their words and found that this philosophy alone was true and profitable. Here's his story. When the unrighteous rule, a righteous man acts. In the late second century, Justin Martyr stood in the middle of a firestorm. Christians all around him were being imprisoned and executed simply for naming themselves Christian. Martyr had a chance to escape from Rome and save himself, but he decided to stay and take a stand with the other Christians. The leaders of the Roman Empire considered Christianity to be a dangerous, rapidly spreading political cult, and they launched bitter attacks against the Christians. Roman Christians were beheaded, crucified, or torn apart by lions in the Colosseums, packed with bloodthirsty spectators. Martyr and the surviving members of the early church grieved bitterly for spouses, friends, and relatives who were stolen from them during this time. Everybody lost someone. But of all of the losses, none affected Justin Martyr more than the execution of Polycarp, the Bishop of Smyrna, a spiritual father to many and a man who had known the Apostle John personally. At the age of 86, Polycarp had been burned at the stake. He had refused to recant his faith in Jesus. Polycarp's death ignited a holy fire within martyr. Counting himself among the believers was no longer enough. He had to do something. So Martyr wrote a powerful and explosive letter to the Roman emperor himself and to Ninus Pius, a risky thing to do. Offending the emperor would certainly result in Martyr's execution. But in his letter to Antoninus, Martyr did not hold back. The Roman state had accused Christians of atheism and punished Christians for rejecting the Roman gods. In response, Martyr denounced all of the Roman gods and called them demons that men call gods. He declared, as far as the Roman gods were concerned, the Christians were indeed atheists, for they had a higher calling, to worship the most true God, the Father of Righteousness. The second serious charge against the Christians was that their cult inspired rebellion against the emperor and, if left unchecked, would soon throw the empire itself into chaos. Martyr smashed that accusation by testifying to what had actually happened. Christ's mighty power worked in the church and transformed them into a people of radical peace. We who hated and destroyed one another, who would not live with men of a different tribe, now, since the coming of Christ, live familiarly with them and pray for our enemies and endeavor to persuade those who hate us to become partakers of the same joyful hope. After writing this letter, Martyr, a man in his late 60s, still could have escaped Rome for the safety of a friendlier nation. Instead, he chose to remain and work tirelessly to legalize Christianity in the Roman Empire. At the same time, he preached the gospel to all who would hear it. Every day he remained in Rome, put his life in great jeopardy, but he continued to act on his faith 
and stand against injustice. Several years later, after a new and equally unjust emperor, Marcus Aurelius, was named Caesar, the time came for martyr to take his final stand. On that glorious day, he found himself in the same position Polycarp had once been, standing before a Roman official who demanded he recant his faith. Justin Martyr would not recant and was executed alongside his students. In James 4, 17, God tells us, whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him is sin. When confronted with injustice, is your faith strong enough for you to take a stand? Are you willing to ask God to strengthen your faith? Now, what injustice is God calling you to take a stand against? When the unrighteous rule, a righteous man acts. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.